Hello everyone, Peter Stapleton here from Bond University. I wanted to give you my annual update of the research in the EFT, Emotional Freedom Techniques area, and just let you know exactly what has been happening over the year 2022. So if this is of value, just have a listen to for a quick summary. Uh, sit back, relax, and I'll walk you through it very briefly. I'll probably start from the end of the year and work back to the start, just because uh, that gives us a bit of a snapshot of exactly where we've come from. So we are very excited that John Freedom, who is the research chair of the Association for Comprehensive Energy Psychology and colleagues, actually did publish late in 2022 a summary article that actually looked at all of the articles and studies that have actually been done in the area of EFT or spiritual EFT and published in non-English speaking journals. Now this is quite profound because for a long time we uh, were across just the articles and studies that have been published in English speaking journals and of course uh, John and his colleagues actually did find that there were in excess of 90 research studies that have actually been published out there. Of course all the references are underneath this video so you can actually go off and, and have a look at those if you want to read the full papers. So that's really exciting to hear that uh, lots of other countries around the world are actually exploring versions of EFT, including spiritual EFT. Of course, Professor Elizabeth Both at uh, Staffordshire University in the UK released her book during 2022. Now the title, I'll get this exactly right, is Making the Case for EFT and Energy Psychology, Designing, Conducting and Publishing Case Studies. Now this book has been written particularly for clinicians in the field as well as of course academics about how to write about EFT and energy psychology case studies. Now that might be individual case studies, so you've seen clients yourself, having some outcomes, of course been using you know, pre and post questionnaires of psychological outcomes. And this book walks you through exactly how to write those up for publication. So really exciting to see that type of resource come out. And again, the reference is here if you want to jump on, you can actually now pick it up in paperback as well as Kindle, just to help guide if you want to contribute to the field uh, out there with your outcomes that you're finding in clinical practice. Now other research that has come out of uh, this particular study, Macedonia, has looked at the effectiveness of EFT for public speaking anxiety. Now this is an area that has been looked at uh, quite a bit across different uh, areas, uh, university students, high school students, as well as different kind of performance settings, that type of thing. And so this particular one had a look at a range of studies that have been run in different countries, Turkey, Australia and Indonesia. And the authors concluded that the review of this particular topic said that even with little resources, EFT can be implemented successfully. And EFT should be offered early in the curriculum for first year university students. So this is an open access journal and you can have a read of the full paper below. An exciting paper that did come out during 2022, again was another integrated uh, literature review that looked at touch-based interventions. It was looking at and examining symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder in adults. So they had a look at a range of different databases and 39 articles actually emerged there. They looked at 11 different touch-based interventions and we're having a look at how is it that they can be effective for um, obviously the treatment and remediation of post-traumatic stress disorder, had a look at what are the mechanisms of touch-based interventions with PTSD and exactly what kind of outcomes can they achieve. Uh, one of the interventions, of course, that they identified and included and the one that actually prevailed across all 11 touch-based interventions was, of course, EFT. So that paper is below and I encourage you to have a look at we have had several papers come out in 2022 by our friend and colleague, Dr. David Feinstein. One of his new, newest papers has actually been published by the American Psychological Association, and it was titled, Combining Acupressure with Established Psychological Methods Improves Clinical Outcomes. So that paper in particular looked at when we do have standard established, perhaps gold standard approaches in the cognitive world, how can the addition of acupressure, uh, so EFT in our world, even thought field therapy as well, how can that improve those psychological outcomes? So the paper itself uh, is below, I encourage you to have a look at. 
uh, another paper that actually has been done by Dr. David Feinstein was uses of energy psychology following catastrophic events. Now we do know that EFT and thought field therapy have been investigated in particularly regions around the world that have faced catastrophic events, whether they're man-made or natural disasters. And David's paper, again, in an open access journal, walks through exactly how energy psychology can support people in that field. So that's very exciting to see that come out. We've had another functional MRI study come out by colleagues overseas. Our German researcher friends actually published the paper on how, how the brain changes when one's inside that MRI machine through imaginal tapping. So their first study showed uh, with the concepts of fear and disgust, uh, how the brain actually changes when we imagine tapping on points inside those MRI machines. This particular study uh, was a subset of that original study and looked at 29 people with flight phobias, so fear of flying. And again, inside that machine had a look at just a single session of Imagine Tapping. So very exciting to actually let you know that not only on the psychological scale, so fear of flying scales, that kind of thing, but also the brain activity there, that the results lent themselves to the effectiveness of tapping across a range of different contexts added to that amygdala activation during tapping, which is what their original study found. And of course, you know, activation in other sort of areas in the brain, purely by lying inside that machine and doing imagined tapping. Full paper is below if you want to have a look at. A study just as part of our tapping world uh, on thought field therapy, TFT, uh, came out in 2022 on dental fear. Now this one had a look at um, comparing TFT to other non-medical fear reduction techniques. And this one was done in Saudi Arabia. So it actually was done looking at patients that clearly had dental fear, and, and that's quite a common fear out there. So they had a look at different things like level of fear, pulse rate, blood pressure, so some biochemical uh, chemical changes and physiological measurements in there as well. Uh, and had a look at you know what it was like when they randomly allocated them, them to TFT tell, show and do, which was a technique, um, a control shift technique, and then a negative control, so no intervention, uh, just to see which one of those uh, particular groups would actually have the biggest effect. So the average score there indicated moderate dental fear. Uh, the TFT group, thought field therapy, showed significantly low dental fear after their treatment, whereas the um, other groups that were receiving an active intervention um, showed higher blood pressure and pulse rate. 65% uh, of the thought field therapy group recommended the method, the tapping method, to reduce fear, um, whereas the other groups were much less than that. So really interesting to show that, again, in the dental fear, which we've had some EFT studies come out, thought field therapy uh, prevailing there as well for that. So that's very exciting. Some other papers, so there is a lot that came out in 2022, and this one was particularly encouraging in light of what we've all been facing worldwide with our pandemic. Uh, EFT was investigated as an alternative therapy to reduce anxiety disorders and depression in people that were positive to the COVID-19 uh, virus. So it had a look at reducing anxiety and depression in this particular patient group. It was done in Indonesia, 22 people there that were actually in isolation due to being um, testing positive, uh, did lots of questionnaires of course, and then watched a seven minute EFT video uh, on their first day of the intervention, two days later, and another two days later after that. There was also a fourth two days. So this was over a period of eight 10 days, then they completed their post measures. So they did their own self-tapping following along that video. Significant decrease in anxiety and depression after they completed that. Uh, there wasn't a control group, it was a small sample, but in this area it was quite exciting to see that there were studies that have actually been done obviously supporting people through those kind of diagnoses as well. Another study that was very similar to one that I'd run many years ago on EFT for depression, I had a study that came out um, 2015 and 16 around EFT versus cognitive behavioural therapy for depression and replication trials are really important just to establish that it's the outcomes aren't due to 
individual sort of, you know, things that we bring, so that might be warmth and empathy and compassion, rather than us as a person, it's the technique itself that actually achieves the outcomes. So again, another study that had a look at EFT versus CBT, Cognitive Behavioural Therapy, for stress, anxiety and depression, short-term memory loss, um, psychophysiological heart coherence and heart rate in Indian uh, young adults actually showed that EFT again um, was achieved their improvements, so in depression, anxiety, stress, after three sessions. After eight weeks of intervention, the CBT group reported their significant outcomes. So this particular study very much mirrored some of the other comparison studies done to CBT, where the outcomes are achieved for both interventions, but the EFT ones are actually achieved in uh, less than half the sessions in this particular case. So consistent with um, what we found, as well as um, obviously other papers out there as well. Dr. Dawson Church and myself and our team produced a paper and was finally published. This one took some years, which looked at a six week online EFT program for emotional eating, obviously looking at behavior change and weight loss over time. This particular study uh, actually found the greatest amount of weight loss compared to all of the studies we've done in this space. So 72 participants were actually recruited. Uh, lots of things were measured, obviously anxiety, um, depression, things like that, power of food, restraintability, obviously um, weight loss, that type of thing. Uh, so I can let you know that there was a 37% reduction in anxiety, a 48.5% reduction in depression, perceived power of food, so that's how much do I perceive that food sitting in front of me has power over me, um, decreased significantly, as did restraint, so at a statistical level. Um, on average, during the six-week program, participants lost 12, nearly 13 pounds. Uh, that's equal to about six kilograms. And at follow-up, another 2.6 pounds, 1.1 kilos. Uh, everything was maintained psychologically. And, you know, those gains continued over time. So again, mirroring everything that we found, but greater weight loss in this particular study, which was uh, quite exciting for us to publish. So again, the links are below so that you can have a look at those. A study that looked at EFT for self-esteem. Often we do get questions about self-esteem and the application. So 115 participants in this study. Uh, so this was done in nurses. So um, 87 female nurses, 28 male nurses. So they did an EFT training via an online platform. And self-esteem was measured, of course, with the Rosenberg self-esteem scale. So single session. Uh, EFT was effective in significantly increasing self-esteem uh, and exciting to see that in populations perhaps where things like that might be affected due to you know, work situations, that type of thing. Um, in the medical field, again, a lovely addition to see nurses being exposed to EFT. Another one that was done in, um, I told you a lot happened in 2022, another one that was done on psychological symptoms and cravings in substance-related disorders came out in 2022. Often we do get questions about how much has been done or published in the area of addiction. So this paper is quite exciting to have a look at. This one was actually done in Egypt. So 90 patients actually received 22 sessions of EFT, so quite an extensive program. The sessions were about 30 to 45 minutes long, over seven months. So they were actually in a substance-related disorders program. Uh, opioid substances were the main ones. The majority of them did use opioids. EFT over that seven month period resulted in highly statistically significant differences uh, for level of craving for the substance. They had lower scores for things like somatization, obsessive compulsive traits, uh, interpersonal sensitivity, depression, anxiety, that type of thing. They also had lots of responses in terms of hostility, anxiety, um, paranoia, ideation, psychoticism, those types of things we see too. So all those positive symptoms were much lower statistically significantly at post-test, which was very exciting to see things coming out of that sort of space. 
So lots of things happening in 2022 and it's, um, it's just been a pleasure to be able to update you. Of course, we did from Bond University uh, submit the review of EFT for post-traumatic stress disorder to the American Psychological Association for review and inclusion on their evidence-based uh, psychological treatments website and we are waiting an outcome on that. So we will surely update you when that happens. But that's the first time that uh, that invitation has actually been made. So wonderful news, lots of things happening and certainly lots of change in this space. So it's been a pleasure. I hope you enjoy exploring what is below and of course there probably are papers out there, particularly in John's paper that I started with in other um, non-English speaking journals that have been published and certainly came out in the last 12 months that you might like to explore as well. I hope all of this has been of benefit and maybe you've been able to share it somewhere as well and of course always reach out if you need anything else. I'll see you again soon everybody.